Yeah, uh, I'm going to switch to Ukrainian. Я говоритиму українською uh, на прохання організаторів. І після цієї короткої перерви, поки ви всі швиденько всідаєтеся, ми розпочинаємо дискусійну частину сьогоднішньої асамблеї. Uh, і розпочати її я б хотіла... Uh, я спершу представлюся, я Анастасія Платонова, я культурна критикиня і редакторка, я модеруватиму серію дискусій, однією, of course, of course. однією з яких буде ця дискусія. Thank you so much, Simon. А, і я би хотіла розпочати цю дискусію з подяки. Я хочу подякувати а, організаторам асамблеї за фантастичну організацію програмування і курування цієї події та кураторська група, яку ми бачили на початку е, сьогоднішнього робочого дня, зробила неймовірну роботу, навіть побіжно е, маючи до неї відношення як модераторка серії дискусій. Я бачила, який огром роботи вони зробили, аби ця фантастична е, правда Чудова аудиторія тут сьогодні зібралася. Я дуже щаслива тут бачити багато облич, частину з яких я не бачила кілька місяців, попри те, що ми живемо і працюємо в Україні, але зараз розкидані по світу. Я також хочу подякувати спікеркам, які зробили промови в першій частині цього дня, зокрема Катерині Ботанові, тому що, слухаючи Кацину промову, я весь час думала, що, наскільки це резонує, наскільки те, про що написала Катя з Базеля, резонує із тим, як це відчувається з Києва, Харкова, Львова і решти міст. Uh, actually, we feel the same in Kyiv, in Lvov and in other cities. And on, not only on, emotion, on an emotional level, I would like to give thanks, but I would like to give thanks to all of you because uh, there won't be uh, any better framework uh, for such discussions. Uh, future... Uh, Katerina Yakovlenka said that the uh, future is now the future is now with us. We cannot postpone ease. We cannot think that something more meaningful will come. And the war has taught us so many things and it taught us uh, that we cannot postpone anything for later. We have to do everything on time. And so we have to start developing our future right now when we are feeling that we are in darkness and we do not know what we will uh, be our next steps and how we will uh, rebuild. Ми сьогодні uh, говорити з незалежними культурними професіоналами. І саме тому Катя спіч була ідеальною для професіоналів. Uh, сьогодні ми будемо говорити з українськими незалежними професіоналами, про те, як змінилася їхня практика за останні Ми будемо говорити про те, як нам відчувається practice has changed. We are going to speak uh, about how to uh, create new reality for our work, uh, how to find some um, some support for us, how to overcome the pain uh, that we've been living in for more than 10 months. And I think that this uh, an hour and a half talks will be not sort of a therapy for us, but uh, we will be able to discuss uh, how the variety of our experience uh, can be so similar that we can understand each other and how these skills that we are obtaining so quickly during these 10 months, how these skills can help us become a set of tools, some base for new visions, for strategic approaches, because in order to uh, build and rebuild uh, Ukraine and future Ukrainian culture, we will need a lot of new tools. And so we have quite a lot of changes, challenges that we have not faced before. And so we have asked wonderful speakers that I'm going to introduce in a minute to prepare a very first introductory speech for a few minutes. Uh, so that you will be able to understand the experience that uh, these people had during these last months. And so you will be on the same page with them before we will move on to the main discussion. So I will introduce uh, speakers one by one. Uh, Valeria Shilov, uh, who is a curator. Uh, yes. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Let's try. Uh, yes, uh, I think we can hear you. Hello. Uh, 
thanks a lot for uh, inviting me. My name is uh, Valeria Schiller. I'm a specialist in uh, culture and I'm from Cri the Crimea. I have come to Kiev in 2012, uh, to 14 due to annexation of the Crimea. And then I had to move to Berlin uh, since uh, March. Now I'm living in Berlin. And uh, how much my experience has changed. In Kyiv, I uh, worked in Pinchuk Art Center on different positions. Then I left it and started working as a teacher in Kyiv uh, Academy of uh, Media Arts. And then for two, for two years, I worked as an editor of online um, uh, arts looker. And on the night uh, from the 23rd to 24th of February, uh, we had a cyber attack on uh, the whole our server. And so it uh, stopped its functioning for a few months. And right at that moment, I thought it's sort of ritual moment uh, because on the one hand, we were among these 4% that uh, you mentioned before. But at that very moment, when the uh, full-scale invasion started, almost all projects that made sense before, they just lost their sense. We felt it all. Uh, yes, and in order to continue any project, we have to rethink and we have to adjust to new reality. And we had a few texts that we could not just publish them because we didn't have uh, this resource. But even though if we even if, uh, would publish it, uh, it, we understood, we felt that it just didn't make sense because it was written before the war. And I think that this is a feeling that we all experienced. And that's why it's so important to do everything on time. Yes, we know it on practice that we have to do everything on time. And uh, we had so many mental issues afterwards. I think every one of us has such as uh, mental issues. Uh, even if someone uh, lived abroad before the war, it's uh, this whole war influenced every one of us. And uh, we had uh, to rethink so many things. Yes, and we have to do rethinking work on time too. And I think that I won't uh, tell a lot about how my practice has changed and what I'm doing in Berlin now. Uh, now I'm finishing my work in National Gallery in Berlin. We prepared one exhibition, now we are preparing another one. But uh, basically, it's very challenging to work with the Europe Western European context. Uh, it's very challenging for us, and especially in Germany. We know that, we all know that they have left views quite often and it's not very easy but it's very interesting and it's very interesting to think how we can better uh, how we can be heard better and one point i would like to mention is uh, about complex of our value uh, just right before the uh, um, full-scale invasion started, I think that we realized uh, that we have another value. And uh, we could learn from so many people uh, who uh, has worked with the European institution before, but due to this war, we understood that we are not worse than anyone. We are not worse than Western specialists. Yes, I think that a lot of people share your experience, and we will speak uh, more uh, in more detailed way about your experience of migration, about uh, uh, working uh, experience in working uh, with the in such projects when part of team, uh, when teams are in different uh, countries. And I, I would like to invite uh, Ms. Valentina, who is also a curator. Can you hear me? Yes. I would like to start with my testimony too. I uh, am experiencing this Russian-Ukrainian war uh, since 2014. My uh, mom is quite famous around in the Ukrainian uh, creative world. Uh, and uh, she was in the occupied Donbass in 
2014, and she uh, died in 2019 at the checkpoint. And a person from uh, the Donetsk uh, People's Republic called to me and uh, said to me that you have to take her body because she died at the checkpoint. So I'm leaving this war for quite some time. And I can say that uh, for some, during some time, uh, my mom um, just proved to me that uh, this is her own decision to uh, be in the occup or to be to stay on the occupied territories. And some people thought about me that I'm a bad daughter because I didn't take my mom from those occupied territories. But uh, uh, when the war started, I did the same. I was sitting in shelter, uh, in bomb shelter, when the war started. And uh, I just, when the war started, I just thought that Russians are depriving me of my time because I was sitting in shelter and didn't do anything. And then I realized that uh, I'm, I'm depriving more and more of my time because we don't have electricity. And when I told to my partners that uh, we did not have uh, 14 hours, we didn't have electricity for 14 hours, um, I uh, said to them that I'm much slower at the moment because I do not have a, a power supply. Uh, and um, then I realized how we can measure time. We can measure it in material aspects. I mean, everything that I created for two, well 20 years, it can be valued in financial aspects. And when Russians were around two kilometers uh, from us, and I started and uh, and I just uh, was looking at uh, my archive of my works and I started packing my uh, works uh, to uh, the seller uh, because it's my time. And I understood that if I lose this archive, I will lose myself. Uh, I, lo I will lose uh, what I did for uh, what I have done for these 12, 20 years. Uh, and I found a way to preserve my uh, archive. And uh, basically, um, I had sort of a bravery of thinking. And what I invented, I looked at my archive and I thought, uh, I can see archive as some plants. Uh, sometimes we can pick up a part of a plant uh, and put it into water. And uh, this plant is going to um, be rooted in this water and uh, have some roots. And it will be the same um, big plant uh, in uh, some time later. So I decided to take a few of my works and uh, send them to uh, the West Europe, uh, to the institution that I trust. So I... Uh, so basically, I uh, brought 70 years of uh, my time here. Uh, and uh, yes, so you're preserving your time. Yes, I can say where we have our time and um, what should we do with that, even if we have uh, power supply again. And uh, although I do not believe that we will rebuild the infrastructure quite quickly, but if we do something in our own way, but we do not understand where we have problems, we are also wasting our time. We are eating up our time. And uh, and I'm in a hurry uh, because you told me that you, I do not have enough time. But And what's wrong with us? I understand that we do not have a very good uh, arts education. And I realized that since the full-scale uh, invasion, I uh, had so much work, and I had, it means I had so much money as never before, and I received it because I had a um, network, I knew the language, I had my Western education, so I started sharing it with my uh, elderly colleagues, uh, painters, but not all painters in uh, Ukraine have the same situation because they didn't have opportunity to study abroad as I was able to do. So uh, this arts education is something that I would like to uh, speak about. Uh, and I have to say it. Just remember my words. Arts education is so important. And it's a big problem. It's very important to speak about this now. Uh, Vladimir Yamolka uh, mentioned that uh, something ingenious that we cannot bring to the future. 
And I think that our arts education is not real because it's our heritage from the Soviet times. And we know that this is part of our colonial history. And this war is also colonial. So we cannot leave it as it is. Uh, thank you, Valentina, for your wonderful speech. Thank you for mentioning these challenges. And I will ask about you about many challenges. Uh, and uh, what challenges do you think are key ones? I think that you touched upon all layers from the bottom to top. And so I think that we will return to all of your um, challenges. And our next speaker is curator and arts manager, Natalia Kotubinska. Uh, Natalia is online with us today. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you and see you. I can see only a part of you, so it's difficult for me to concentrate. But still, I will uh, move on. Good afternoon to everyone. My name is Tatiana Kaczybinska. I'm a specialist in arts, and for the last few years, I'm working as a, I have been working as an independent curator and author of texts. And before this, I was related to work in two institutions, uh, the Museum of Russian Arts, uh, now it's a Kiev uh, Art Gallery, and Pin Pinchuk Art Center. I was a curator of a research platform. And with this platform, we have studied the history of contemporary Ukrainian art. We published books. And for the last two years, I think that my uh, life was more related not to Kyiv, but to such places as Kharkiv and Dnipro. And in the beginning of February, uh, current year, I started teaching in the Kharkiv Academy of Design and Art. But of course, it was interrupted by war. And so my teaching activity in uh, Korea uh, is no longer developing. Unfortunately, to my regret, and for the last few years, I uh, cooperated with the uh, Center of Contemporary Art in uh, Dnipro, and I think that this is a very good and innovative center, uh, and it's a very good initiative. And even today, despite the war, they keep working. They have their arts activity. and. They made this institution into a social hub in war conditions, and we have worked together with them and created an ex we were uh, to open up an exhibition in June. And this exhibition uh, was uh, very important to me, Conversations in Ukraine. It's a very uh, interesting project uh, of uh, who, of a person who interviews uh, people, uh, children from 6 to 10 p years uh, on different uh, aspects. On the basis of his, these interviews, he is creating audiovisual installations. And for me, it was very important to do this project in different cities of Ukraine. Uh, these are seven cities that we cho chose. And these cities have uh, borders with Russia, some of them with Poland, with Hungary. So this was a research project that had to uh, pr represent the voices of children. And we had to present the way our society is functioning in children's eyes. And unfortunately, this project was not implemented because we have um, worked on it so much. And but and in uh, December, we were able to prepare the first part. We have recorded the eight voices of people from Dnipro. Also, um, these were children of uh, internally displaced people. Uh, who moved to Dnipro, but now the context has changed radically, and it's a very interesting phenomenon. And we have recorded the voices in the city, which is almost at the front line. Dnipro uh, is so close to the front line. So basically, we presented the state, the condition of the societies two months before the war, and I think that 
if answering the question, what changed, how much our practice changed. I think that it changed drastically, and during the first months of war, we had such a feeling that I was just uh, speechless, because uh, I couldn't realize what art can do in these conditions. But I think that quite a lot of us uh, were invited. Uh, we started uh, giving speeches. We started taking part in discussions. We were invited quite a lot to different events. And on the one hand, uh, it's uh, very nice because we can talk to people, we can present the Ukrainian art, but on the same time, it's understandable that such interest to Ukraine uh, is due to the war. And we understand that this interest will not be uh, sustainable, it will not last long, and it will last until we are in media. So if you are speaking about uh, challenges of the society, so we have to think how to make this interest stable so that uh, this interest will not be limited to our Ukraine, Ukrainian nationality, because uh, so it will not relate to our Ukrainian origin. Uh, if you allow, we will move uh, to these aspects later. Uh, and I would like to uh, support uh, uh, our previous speaker. Yes, the arts education was on the law level, and uh, now um, this, the same problem remains. It was a metaphor that uh, the lack of education is the biggest problem, as much as um, faulty this might sound. But when it comes to competitiveness uh, of the Ukrainian culture, um, when it comes to the wartime, uh, we are quite limited to this um, sphere. So this is why it is um, necessary for us to develop education. And when it comes to the third question, we'll come back to you, but I hope you can hear me. Thank you so much, Tanya. I think we'll um, dive deeper into the discussion. I'd like to um, ask the audience how they relate to your questions, and we'll get back to it when it comes to projects and practices, how you manage to reform um, your institution and projects connected with um, uh, registering the um, oral testimonies in the occupied areas. Uh, another point um, voiced by Tanya is the representation of Ukraine in the world, what we can really do in the short term and in the close future um, when it comes to being Ukrainian and in the Ukrainian context that right now we have the um, huge... Um, now I'd like to um, introduce you to uh, Stanislav Turina, a great artist, and his uh, experience of um, 10 months of the war. I'll sit here. Um, welcome, everyone. I'll turn on the timer to stop just in time. Hello, everyone. My name is Stanislav Turina. I came here to the residence f right from Kyiv. Nine years ago, I had a um, psychiatric uh, episode. I spent some time in the hospital. So when uh, the war started, the first one and a half months, it was nothing unusual for me, to be honest. So I uh, revisited my episode. I knew what to do. Uh, something similar to happen to me before. Uh, right now I don't paint. Uh, I work as a curator uh, for um, people with the Down syndrome and without this syndrome. I decided to stay in Kyiv and I was preparing to this phase of the, um, of the war since December. I uh, participated in uh, medical courses uh, I was reading pamphlets, 
uh, every single week uh, we were discussing with my friends where to go, what to do when the war starts. So we had a plan, even when um, Kyiv uh, were to be occupied, we would decide to stay there. How did my life uh, change? Well, it did. It changed not through the internal issues in, Pol uh, in, in Ukraine, but due to the fact that everything around changed. We understand, everybody understands what I'm talking about. Uh, thank God um, half of my uh, contact book in my phone is alive, but um, half of my contact list is um, unavailable because they are outside of Kyiv or they move here and there, leave the city and come back. Uh, on the eve of the war, I wrote to Maxim Kowalczuk, uh, curator who um, who was the co-organizer of three exhibitions in Kyiv. So on the eve, I wrote him an email. Uh, we are um, experiencing emergency states, so. I decided not to finish the, the email because um, maybe I'll write him, I'll finish the email the next day. It won't be a problem after all. Well, lastly, um, when it comes to what we can do about the future, we can do much, much more. But lastly, I will say that um, it happened that during the full-scale invasion, I um, went to the uh, psychiatric hospital once again. Uh, the, it's uh, Soshenka Street 33. This is the, the address of... Um, we talked a lot online and we, we had to do something, um, keep ourselves, ourselves busy. And there was an open call for uh, vol volunteers in the psychiatric hospital. So thanks to my previous experience, I work as a translator there. Thanks to my uh, nine years of experience in um, the hospital, I know very, very well the, um, the nurses, the, the doctors, and even the, the head of the unit. So I help um, at, the, at the site and I translate. Uh, what's interesting right now, well, I support everybody. I don't want to talk too much in details about this, but when it comes to Ukraine, we lack uh, specialists um, when it comes to inclusivity. And lastly, I would like to elaborate that the whole Ukraine is a kind of a country of disability in a sense. Uh, when it comes to coming back to any kind of archive, I'll speak in easy language. Um, um, I will use easy language with uh, people who are mentally ill because that's the language they understand. Such questions have an existential nature, so people in the psychiatric world uh, they are ready to answer these, let's say, because they, they face these answers every day. You don't know what the world, uh, what uh, your life prepares you to. Uh, I think it's really interesting that people of culture and art, they always um, are better fit to be facilitators in difficult situations and circumstances. I think it's a great illustration of that picture. Now I'd like to um, uh, invite uh, Daria Kuzmic, artist, uh, who is just entering the stage. Please, the floor, the floor is yours. Good afternoon, can you hear me? Yes. Good afternoon, my name is Daria Kuzmic. Where should I begin? Um, if you've got the slides, you can uh, start them up and you can begin. No, thank you. Okay, we, we don't need the clicker. Thanks.
uh, I'm an artist and my last seven years I've been living literally um, over uh, the borders uh, between Berlin and Kiev and Vilnius. In 2015, I went to Berlin to uh, for education and I um, had to undergo some operations, so I had to take some break, so I had to return. So last year, I um, completed the University of um, completely the University of Berlin, and I had a plan to come back uh, to Ukraine slowly but surely. So until I spent three months in Kiev um, until the war, together with my mum. Uh, together, we were with my mum. We were organizing a collab co collaborative. Um, um, of exhibition of textile works. Then, on, at the beginning of February, I went to Austria because in spring I was invited. Uh, I will talk about this in detail because it it matters for the context of our discussion. Um, the the city of Treskin, 20 kilometers from um, uh, from Wien. Uh, features the biggest center for refugees in Austria. All refugees um, in Austria go through this center. Um, to be honest, it looks like a like a prison because um, um, I worked in in, in in this context actually, and uh, so I went to to Austria to continue my uh, research work. Uh, when it comes to understanding of time, in the times of trauma and traumatic experience and other experiences as well. Uh, key challenges, well, for the Ukrainian um, culture, I'd like to talk about, I'm interested in all aspects that uh, the previous speakers have been talking about uh, when it comes to inclusivity and uh, time. It's uh, quite logical because I've been working with these uh, topics. And of course, education. And I will uh, come back to one of the aspects that Alevtina mentioned. Uh, and yes, we have a catastrophic situation with the art education in Ukraine. And I can speak more about Kyiv and this very system that uh, education can be obtained only in informal way or uh, by going abroad, what I did basically a few years ago. and. One of the biggest questions for me now is how to combine our connections with, uh, how to connect with people who left Ukraine and uh, not see it as tragedy, but uh, that someone left the country, but that this is just a new experience and opening uh, yourself to uh, the world or developing the uh, network of contacts or presenting the Ukrainian uh, culture abroad. Yes, it is just worth uh, looking at our context broadly. I think, yes, it's a wonderful experience. But I, my question is, those people who were forced to go abroad due to education uh, or due to some other things, how these professional professionals can return to Ukraine and be reintegrated. And so these are very interesting aspects to me. And I would like to add that during the war, during the first months of war, I felt strongly that I would like to uh, return to my country 
and now I am in Kiev. I have a working visa to Germany, but I'm not going to uh, prolong it. So that's all for now. Thanks a lot, Dasha. And I am very surprised that you feel so strongly uh, these things that I feel too. Yes, uh, you mentioned the reintegration of professionals. It's very uh, important whether we are going to have some uh, sustainable model or whether we have to create some new model. Yes, we will talk about it uh, definitely. But for international uh, audience here, uh, it is worth mentioning that our uh, professional experience is interrelated with emotional experience. And the last participant of uh, our uh, discussion is uh, uh, Teresa Barabash, who is with us online. We can hear you and see you. So the floor is yours. I'm a painter from Lviv, from the Western Ukraine. And I work with uh, textile, with fabrics, uh, with the audiovisual uh, arts. Uh, on the 25th of February, uh, I, my son, my fifth uh, year son and I left the country, uh, and I left my elderly parents, my husband, my brothers, uh, uh, two my, of my brothers, and my nephew. Uh, who uh, joined the armed forces, although my elder brother had uh, five, uh, five children of his own. Uh, so basically, they uh, could just hide someone from this war, but they decided to fight for Ukraine. I was so angry at them at that time. Now I'm uh, proud of them, uh, of my brothers. Uh, they uh, Sometimes they contact with us. We know that they are alive. My my son and I um, first joined our uh, friend in Lublin, then we went to the Baltic Sea, then we went to Austria for residence, then we went back to Poland. Uh, and now we uh, I have an opportunity to teach for one year in National Academy uh, of Arts in Paris. It's very difficult for my son because He's only five years old, uh, and he changed so many countries, so many places, uh, and uh, he, he didn't have such experience before. And uh, I really feel what Aleftina mentioned, that the Russians deprive us of time. They are, uh, uh, and my son uh, speaks three languages. He starts speaking French. On the, on the one hand, it's very interesting experience. But on the other hand, I know that this is forced staying abroad. And I realize that this is sort of uh, that he's deprived of talk, uh, communicating with his grandparents, with his uh, father. And it's very difficult. These languages, these trips, uh, uh, it, it, it's uh, uh, these, all these things do not provide uh, psychological safety to our children. Sometimes I hear such phrases: "You are from the Western Ukraine. Everything is so peaceful there. Uh, why are you uh, hiding? Um, why are you fleeing? Why don't you stay at home?" In Lviv, but it seems to me that it's not fair to keep a child when there are air, uh, alert, uh, air raid alerts all the time going on and when the situation is so unstable. That's why I left the country. Uh, thanks a lot, Teresa. Thanks a lot to all the speakers for wonderful introductory part. Thanks for sharing your experience, which is so complex and so uh, different, and uh, you presented so many challenges to us. So I'm not sure we are going to we are um, going to be able to talk about all of them. But you mentioned both individual and collective challenges. 
and uh, we have such uh, an interesting and difficult time. Uh, we have to be very productive during the day. Everything is so fragile, everything is temporarily, everything is threatened, and we really lack resources. And we have to understand where to invest our resources. Uh, yes, everyone is nodding. Uh, yes, uh, it resonates with us. So how do you think? from your uh, individual perspective. Uh, you have, s uh, your points of view change so much. Uh, what uh, what uh, changed, and almost all speakers, uh, they see the challenges uh, that existed before the full uh, scale invasion. And, but now these challenges are just multiplied and so it's very difficult to understand uh, everything in these conditions of indefinity uh, when we have lack of resources. So how do you think, where should we invest our resources into, uh, what should be a priority in investing our resources to preserve the Ukrainian history and culture that we have uh, and to uh, create uh, our culture and arts, and uh, both on the level of individual gaps and on collective gaps. Let's uh, find the focal points. Uh, s speakers who are online with us, please raise your hand and I will give you floor. Who would like to start answering these questions? I left Kiev a month ago. And, uh, my friends from Open Place, uh, uh, they, they, they just, uh, uh, they, they just uh, brought me uh, away from Ukraine. Um, and therefore, while I'm here, I'm soon going to be back to Ukraine. And I think that uh, in the first uh, turn, it doesn't relate to my profession, but we have to take care of ourselves. In this month, in November, in uh, December, because quite a lot of my friends, they complained uh, on the same uh, on the same things. This is a rule of a volunteer. If you are not able to do uh, something, uh, first you have to put mask on yourself, and then you have to uh, support others. And I think that we need talking. We need. Uh, talk to people uh, throughout this whole period, uh, wherever I was, uh, in uh, Carpathia region, in Kiev. When I stopped, uh, when I stopped talking, everything uh, was just um, destroyed. Uh, yes, I, I think you fully answered my question. Self-care practice should. Uh, help us preserve ourselves. We won't be able to create a future uh, if we do not take care of ourselves. Yes, we have to remember about this. Uh, and this is a message to a lot of you here in the audience. Take care of yourself uh, anytime you can because we need you. I would like to say the same, that we have to take care of ourselves because we are a part of uh, Ukrainian art society. We have. It's not very popular uh, in our art environment. We uh, basically uh, do not uh, have rest. Uh, it's never been popular practice. Yes, but I think that it's very important to, to use the instrument, the tool that every one of us has. Someone writes something, someone paints something. But uh, I think that it's very important to publish everything that we are doing now. Yes, because it can be therapeutic, therapeutic uh, practice. Because sometimes, and I'm thinking about those who left abroad and is now working for a good image of uh, Ukrainian art abroad, sometimes it's better to reflect longer and to think about yourself longer, to think about how uh, ad adjust something to in a more effective way. Uh, so uh, I don't know if I am very accurate in my 
opinions. Yes, I understand you, and I agree with you. I uh, don't be angry with me. I have slides. Yes, uh, I'm so glad that you had such a wonderful presentation. So of course, I'm not mad at you. Uh, in my slides, on my slides, I uh, have a few things that should uh, that we should focus on. Uh, and uh, Katya mentioned this, how we see culture. And I would like uh, to start not with how do we see culture, but with how the state, the policy, politicians in general see us. And you see these drawings. They are very complicated. And we will have some workshops when uh, we can discuss them. And this is a very big dilemma in our regulations, in our law. But the problem is that a Ukrainian uh, uh, artist does not have where to or whom to contact. A, a painter who has a simplified uh, text, uh, text system. Uh, so we are entrepreneurs. And we cannot sell our drawing without selling the rights. But you have the right to do this drawing a sort of an order. So the state makes us not to be artists, but to um, fulfill, accomplish some orders. I have checked it uh, in uh, tax uh, administration. I wrote to them and received uh, a response from them and they confirmed it. And so uh, we have to t uh, speak to committees, to tax committees, and we have to present what we lack and what are the problems and where are the gaps. And this is a survey that proves uh, that 600 of uh, painters would be very glad not to be in shadow. And one of the stereotypes uh, about Ukraine that we are a corrupted uh, country, but 70% of young uh, artists say that we do not want to be in shadow, we want to be legal, but we do not know how to do that. Uh, during my uh, private courses, I have, to, uh, I have to speak about that. Although I'm a performer, I shouldn't speak about this. Uh, this is a drawing from 2018, and it's again about in, in uh, 2018, the GDP from culture and uh, art uh, industries was up to 6%. And uh, chemical industry, uh, almost uh, cultural industry, 4% uh, and uh, chemical industry, 6%. And so you see how much we are able to contribute to our GDP, to our country. Yes, it basically relates to cultural policy. I uh, have not planned to talk about this. Yes, but there are a lot of challenges that you mentioned, starting uh, from art education and uh, up to the artists' rights in um, and some cultural policies. It all uh, makes us think that we have to have very close relationships with the, the state because we have reachy, uh, reached uh, quite a good success in creating new cultural institutions and in developing some uh, rules. Uh, uh, but none of this is sort of uh, uh, is sort of efforts uh, made by the state and we, by the authorities. And so we have to say that the state authorities during this war, too, uh, have not become a big visionary uh, of our cultural professionals. And instead of criticizing the Ministry of Education or Culture, or the state authorities who manage them, we have to discuss what is the role of the state and are there challenges related to uh, inefficiency of the state or the state authorities. Uh, uh, the state is not interested in working with us at the moment. Do you see it as a critical threat? Uh, should we replace uh, the state? Should we take uh, the state's role on us? Or should we try to 
change it, but during the war, it's very difficult to change it. It's very difficult to have a productive dialogue, with a fruitful dialogue with our authorities. And the crisis around the Tavzhenka Center, uh, and I'm, as an acting director, uh, I don't uh, want to think in another way. Uh, and I see that the uh, state authorities uh, are not ready for dialogue with us. And uh, so how can we stimulate this dialogue? How we can be a change if we want to be a change? Thanks. I came to uh, Kyiv at the beginning of October, and I met a protest of uh, Dovzhenko Center protest. The slogan was, uh, our army defends, and the authorities uh, do not. Uh, uh, the Dovzhenko Center is quite emblematic, but it's just, just an example of what's happening. Uh, it proves that the, uh, the state authorities do not understand what um, individual uh, activists uh, do. It's just a statement of uh, facts. I wanted to provide an example as as much as in, in Germany, I understand how it, the system works uh, without any details, but uh, in the spring, I um, led a panel discussion organized by German um, Art Association, and the director invited me to organize. She asked me how to help Ukrainian artists, and I suggested to, apart from practical help, to organize a discussion to understand the context better. So I was really interested in the structure of the um, artistic association. They are kind of intermediaries. This organization represents um, the interests of artists in front of the state um, authorities. They have 800 people who are part of this association. In Ukraine, I guess the number is much lower. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say. We, It's hard to say. In Germany, actually, there, there are certain regulations foreseeing uh, taxes. All the regulations concerning artistic um, life and it's difficult to, for this to appear like that. It's interesting that in Ukraine, uh, this structure does, uh, is, is beyond the sphere of real um, creators, but it, it doesn't work in practice. I believe this is the moment for us now to um, overview and to see that uh, the association of artists uh, can be something beyond a Soviet um, association of um, of artists that re so an association that represents the interests of artists uh, in front of the uh, the state. Uh, this is what we started talking about uh, because the Ukrainian example shows that ha change can happen uh, as much as we can uh, discuss them, and then. Uh, change can happen after the discussion. Uh, I really understand this uh, approach. Uh, we should look at other examples from other countries because many um, Ukrainian artists work uh, uh, abroad, so we can take some examples and implement them in our, our country. Um, Dasha has already said that this is crucial. Um, maybe you'd like to talk about uh, the German example. Yeah, I agree with Dasha because right now we can see how effective such organizations can be. But I also agree with Aleftina that the catastrophe, the disaster uh, of the payment for the order of artists' work is really horrible. 
um, you can uh, work as an artist within a sole entrepreneurship, but some people even did not want to choose this way of, of uh, formalizing your, your activity. Uh, when it comes to paying fees, it's really complicated, and I believe that, in fact, it's much easier to work uh, even when you have to pay taxes, uh, you lose more um, energy to uh, for formalities. And this is why I believe that having this experience, all the people that left the country and work based on contracts, they do not want to work on the black market anymore. Um, we don't have time to discuss all the uh, organizational um, details, but it's really quite complicated. Uh, first and foremost, I think um, payment for work is not really clear. Yeah, this is a must, and we need to talk about this, although I understand it's not a comfortable, n not an easy topic to discuss. Um, uh, we really need to talk about uh, self-care, to take care of... Um, uh, one another of yourself because when we do take care of each of yourself we can work better when it comes to the um uh, the black market you become a part of black market and it's very hard to leave this zone a gray zone actually so if you agree to work um legally you uh, illegally, then you, you, you become part of this illegal sphere and it's very hard to get out of this vicious circle. Uh, what Daria has said, uh, real associations, not Soviet associations as we, as we know them, uh, I understand the international um, discussion. Uh, the international community doesn't understand that we have a huge Soviet uh, heritage that we need to deal with. I will tell it uh, right away. Maybe it will be, maybe we'll um, have some political will to facilitate uh, the elderly activists in the, in the institutions because um, as we were working, um, helping um, at the elderly creators like Mikhail, on the one hand they um, they are so much deep in the Soviet mentality, and I would really want to um, them to abandon this toxic Soviet uh, values. But unfortunately, I also uh, see a lot of this Soviet uh, mentality in uh, young people as well. So I would like, I I'm not stopping, as you can see. Um, director will never show up in this academy because this uh, community, um, the intelligent, let's say, um, if you if you need to, if you want to become a director, you need to have proper education, understanding, and a lot of um, years of experience lecturing in at universities, not in private ones, but in public ones. Uh, so so we really need to fight with this Soviet uh, heritage. Yeah, I understand this um, red tape, which has been ongoing for uh, after the fall of the Soviet Union, unfortunately. Uh, but what can we do? What is the... Uh, we have no exit strategy from this uh, debacle. Uh, so the elderly people who work is another complex of problem that we um, will discuss uh, some other time. I would like to uh, add more to what uh, Katarina has said. For example, the procedure of uh, academic work. It turns out that international diplomas uh, are not respected. So when you have uh, covered all levels of education in Ukraine, your diploma is, is very difficult to uh, to continue elsewhere, so it's necessary to transform, to reform the education um, sphere. That's it on my side. Stas, thanks. I'd like to say that everyone 
we were really, really uh, speaking fast, but we have so much experience that it's difficult to focus on the real thing, the real practice, what we are doing. So I think it's really important uh, that we have no uh, books, uh, history uh, textbooks for Ukraine. We have no institutions. Um, they have not been covered. Key events have not been uh, written down in the books of history. Uh, there was an initiative of uh, association of artists in um, in the Soviet times, uh, and this association was meant to represent the interests of uh, artists. And I agree that in uh, in Germany, they uh, supported some of our colleagues with Down syndrome. Uh, people protest and fight for their rights. But in Ukraine, uh, people with disabilities uh, do not protest, unfortunately. Uh, in uh, Germany, there is uh, an organization um, working for 25 years, and they've been protesting. Uh, but they have just different challenges. I will show you now what kind of slogans um, they, they use. Uh, available. Uh, places for uh, the uh, the disabled. Um, it turns out our cities are not really um, not really safe for uh, the disabled. Uh, they have been so uh, in 2014 and uh, before the war and uh, and um, after the full scale invasion as well. When it comes to the international um, exchange, when I came here, I. Uh, met my curators, we talked about uh, the program, the residency, and uh, I asked them what they are interested in me, what they want to listen from me. Um, last year, before the war, we were in, C in, uh, in Cologne, and I understand that our colleagues from, from Germany, uh, they w were looking at me with wide eyes, op uh, op uh, eyes wide open at me, uh, they looked at me and uh, looked at my photographs, and they were really surprised what kind of work I showed them. I wanted to say that in my sphere, uh, inclusivity, because we are kind of a neophytes in a way, um, we do a lot, we do a lot of things. Um, when it comes to international cooperation, we share our experience, and there are many examples when we inspire our colleagues. And I, bl I think inclusivity um, there is a lot of talk about uh, inequality. Thank you, Stas. If our online speakers do not want to add anything, oh. No, they do not want to uh, add anything. Then we can move on. And um, I would like to uh, touch upon the thing that mentioned Stas and uh, our other uh, guests. And it will be a set of questions because we uh, are limited in time. I, um, Stas mentioned about cooperation and experience of international exchange. And now we see that there are a lot of cultural art uh, specialists are, <clears throat> are abroad, and it creates a lot of opportunities for us on the level of representation, but still it, uh, there are a lot of challenges, and I realize it. For example, how can we work with the teams uh, who are based in different uh, countries? But what do you think about it? You started speaking about transformation, about ongoing trans transformation of uh, Ukrainian art, when uh, there are so many pr professionals who are working uh, in different countries. We do not know how long it is going to last. We do not know how many people decide to uh, remain living abroad and who are going to uh, come back. Uh, <laughs> Uh, please give the mic to the speaker, because otherwise we do not have her hear them. So, what we can do with this system that is being transformated so quickly? 
So what do you personally think? Should we stress uh, that, uh, should we emphasize that we have to uh, um, facilitate the coming back uh, to our country? Uh, but what do you think about it? Teresa wanted to uh, start. I don't know why Stas decided that uh, I want to add something. Probably he heard about it. It's very nice to hear from you. If, uh, as for me, I would, uh, uh, as for me, my son uh, next year is going to attend school. So I do believe that next year I will be able to work uh, in Lviv and my son, that my son will attend uh, Ukrainian school. But when we were in Poland, I feel secure and feel, uh, I felt comfortable and people who surrounded me, they were so nice to us. Although I was in very unstable condition, I didn't care about anything except for news. I only uh, kept looking at the news feed. But uh, after some time ago, I was able to start thinking about art. Uh, sometime later, when we arrived to Austria, we also were surrounded by very nice people whom we trusted. But in Paris, I realized that I have to draw my attention to documents and to some legal aspects and be very careful about them. And I think that what is important, we have to have some organizations that are going to distribute their resources, uh, who promise uh, some Mm, uh, golden perspectives, but then there are no perspectives at all, and the person is left alone. So I think that such uh, things we really need, uh, at least from my point of view. You asked about what uh, we can do with the professionals who left our country. Uh, and you asked it as if we are politicians or policy makers. But uh, basically, we even didn't answer uh, to your previous question. And unfortunately, we do not cooperate with the lawmakers, with some uh, lawmaking initiatives in the government. And we have to uh, um, confirm it. Yes. Um, and we have to realize that we are really cool, and politicians have to make friends with us. But still, uh, an artist is not someone who creates content, but I just don't want to uh, speak about it. Recently, I visited the um, committee uh, who uh, selects the application forms uh, for the candidates uh, who want to uh, receive some grants from the president. And if we read uh, these applications, you know, really, um, we shouldn't believe sometimes, we shouldn't believe our artists sometimes, because uh, if I were a politician, I w won't, uh, wouldn't believe many of these people. How can we just leave this uh, vicious circle? How uh, can we change our laws? How it's all our heritage, Soviet heritage, heritage. Uh, every person uh, who uh, dealt with the tax, uh, who uh, uh, created the regu tax regulations for artists, uh, have uh, no person who created such regulations uh, has uh, ever spoken to uh, artists, because there are some um, s some materials mentioned, for example, pestles that are not used at the moment. <laughs> okay. But what I mean, that uh, no one spoke to artists, uh, no one I in uh, the circles of policymakers. Yes, it's true. And I think that we should demand to have a dialogue with our authorities, because the cultural professionals showed such uh, high efficiency that um, uh, for example, mentioning the str strategy, cultural strategy uh, 2025, it proves that uh, 
our team contrib uh, the team that um, elaborated this strategy uh, made a very big contribution to the development of culture but we have to have more agency we have to um, have stronger voice uh, during the talks with our authorities and we have to demand uh, uh, the authorities to uh, listen to us all of us we are sort of uh, little branches of Ministry of Foreign Affairs. When we are uh, traveling to some Western countries, uh, sometimes we are asking ourselves, aren't our uh, efforts too small? Maybe uh, these efforts make up uh, the bigger picture. But if all these travels were uh, part of foreign policy, it would be much more efficient. And so I would like to thank to the Ukrainian Institute who uh, has been doing just a wonderful uh, job for these last uh, months. So there is hope. I just for forgot uh, the, what was the question. Uh, uh, yes, I will remind you. The question is, what should we do with the system of cultural professionals who are scattered around the whole world? Should we uh, learn to live in such condition and uh, consider it as something permanent, but or should we try to preserve these people as some key figures uh, in, uh, the way they uh, functioned before the 24th of February? I think that temporary and uh, fragile networks is our biggest power at the moment. And I think that we can see this phenomena not as some laws, but we should see it as expansion of our worldviews and that it can sort of replace the education because we can still live in the closed world of wonderful Ukraine, but it's not realistic and it's not worth doing this. And I think that we have to create some programs. In the beginning of my statement, I, I said the word reintegration. After immigration, there is reintegration. Reintegration, yes, coming back. So if someone leaves the country, works in some other country, I think it's very interesting to uh, create some programs, residential programs for those who are living abroad. I don't know if it's what do you mean, Re residence of sort of repatriation programs for Ukrainians probably some temporary grants or uh, something like that. Uh, for example, I was blamed or I was accused of having access to German institutions. Then why I'm still working in Ukraine? And why are you still working in Ukraine? Uh, why do you want to uh, do something in Ukraine? And I heard it from different people in different contexts. It sounds funny, but it's really sad because it means that, for example, we have problems with institutions and we have to confess them, we have to articulate them, but in order to work in Ukraine, we have to uh, realize the uh, things that we have there, and we have to try to uh, change it step by step, um, but not to say, you are in Germany and just um, be there and uh, do not uh, disturb us here in Ukraine. But unfortunately, we have to confront with that. So I think that support of uh, these links, connections with people who are staying abroad at the moment, and some efforts uh, to reintegrate uh, these artists, it should be done. And I think that it will be very fruitful and productive. Thanks, Dasha. It sounds very inspiring. I would like to say that Katerina Botanova spoke about 
culture and uh, the contemporary uh, modern uh, diaspora 2.0, Russian uh, diaspora 2.0, some uh, key, uh, some uh, um, key uh, literature positions were published. And first barrier I had is to leave Ukraine, how to buy tickets, how to organize documents. Maybe I have just to stay, how to overcome these barriers. And one of my friends told me uh, before I came here, it's not you who need this, but those people who are going to meet you there, they need you. It is very important to see a live person from Ukraine and to speak about this diaspora to zero. We are sort of uh, representatives of this diaspora to some extent. And uh, it's just uh, preserving of our ties. Uh, we know that, for example, people are ordering uh, Ukrainian books uh, for their children who are staying abroad. And it's really good. Yeah, thanks for this idea. And I see that we are short of time. So I'm going to ask the final question, although we uh, not uh, deepened into some topics, but still. I would like to speak about uh, some more aspects. And I would like to ask you uh, about such thing. Uh, we have discussed a lot of layers. And what new skills uh, and what new survival skills, survival practices became the most important uh, for you? And what skills can be uh, a basis for you uh, for in order to create new strategies? Who would like to start? Inclusiveness, I think. Dasha mentioned uh, uh, this. And we have to speak to others in our community, not to hurt others. We have an external threat, and so we don't have to hurt ourselves from in the inside. And so have, we have to treat each other with uh, respect. But again, we have to uh, keep discussing. And so I think that uh, how, um, it's again a question of education, how to uh, run a discussion. I had a thought, but I lost it. Uh, you, we have a few seconds, so you can pass the mic to Stas. I don't really know how it applies to my profession, but as I understood what I want, what I do not want to work with, well, it doesn't work at all, at all times, but the very understanding of the principles when in, in, in Ukraine, everybody understands everything within the community. Thanks. Now I now I got the thought. Um, after this experience, every single time um, in the public discussions with the uh, with in the international community, I do not consider myself just one individual. So many of us understand this that uh, we should take part in the collective uh, it's really cool that you receive this experience and you can uh, record it with your uh, w with your hot heart but after some time when you can uh, take a look back step back and analyze it then you can share it with uh, with the audience uh, Teresa we don't have uh, much time but you wanted to say something yeah I'm in the still in the process so I think after the victory of Ukraine we will explain, we'll take a look at our experience and, and make some conclusions. But right now, I think that uh, I deal with really empathetic people. 
so I am able to develop my empathy in myself to survive and to use this uh, this value in a positive way to uh, retain my uh, mental health. Thank you so much. Tanya, uh, very quickly, if you could, just to add some final thoughts on the discussion. Yes, I wanted to support uh, Lira's uh, thought because now we, uh, the institutions, when, when you have worked with institutions, we un you understand that uh, problems share something. Um, but we need to implement some um, changes in the institutions to, sol uh, to make people solidar solidarize within themselves and to include all the narratives, all the voices, because the problem is that we're trying to uh, create one paradigm which is uh, vital for the whole country. But actually, I think the institutions and the uh, development of infrastructure cultural infrastructure can support the solidarity of the community uh, because Aleftina, as she said, um, the legal aspect is quite absent. Um, there are some, uh, I mean, we have great uh, artists, but we have, we lack infrastructure. Um, we can consolidate and solid, uh, make people solidarize with themselves what you have said about the institutions is really important. Um, we will come back in uh, to this notion in the coming days. I would like to really thank, because we don't have, uh, we need to uh, wrap up. I'd like to thank the organizers and the participants of the today's um, discussion who participated offline and online, because I think today to be a Ukrainian cultural professional is uh, a balancing act. Uh, if you ask me what is the key insight, uh, what is the main tool that I understand within these months, uh, every single day uh, we are making uh, baby steps in order to um, fight uh, problems and every single uh, prof cultural professional and the institutions, I'm really thankful for you and thank you for the, uh, today's discussion. Thank you to everybody.